YouTube Madden Super Weekend just happened, and I want to do some film room breakdowns on uh, the competitors. The reason why is because I think one of the best ways to get better in Madden is to study what the best players do and try to understand why they are doing what they are doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it, all of that stuff. So I love film study. We're going to get into this. This is Dez versus Vos. I thought this was one of the better games of the weekend. Dez absolutely played incredible uh, this weekend. A lot to learn from him. I think Dez has one of the better defenses in the game right now. And uh, so a lot to learn in this video. So we got two different variations of dollar you're going to see in this video. And uh, we're watching this on Dub.W's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to him in the, in the uh, comment or the description down below if you're a Madden guy and you don't know who W is, um, you're probably living under a rock. He's probably the best content creator in the space right now for kind of going between Comp Madden and as well as a content creator. So really excited uh, to break this down for you and uh, see what we can get into this tape and see what we can learn. Again, really enjoyed. Uh, was actually super, super thankful that they did something like this. I thought this was really cool. Like it was like all throughout the, all throughout the uh, year, there were uh, basically qualifying tournaments that got them down to these final eight players. And we have a live event here. I think this was in Norman, Oklahoma. So uh, really good tournament here. And uh, honestly, great timing too. I mean, having a real good tournament like this in basically late March, I think it's really good for Madden. Kind of gives people a reason to keep playing late into the year. And really the best time to play Madden, in my opinion, is later in the year just because... Uh, the game plays, I don't know if better is the right word, but I, I feel like the last couple of years, like March, April, uh, May, those those games have played a lot better, especially without prelits. And this tournament, prelits are banned. Uh, I think Threat Detector is banned. I do think Identifier, I think they're allowed to have Identifier, so you'll know who who's user and who. Um, but as far as playbooks for this, Dez is going to be in the Jets playbook on offense, in the Chiefs playbook on defense. Uh, as far as Vos, I think Vos is in four, six, or multiple defense because he runs dime normal and he runs the rollover third stuff at a dollar. And then on offense, Vos is going to be in Bengals. Vos is really the only competitive player. Uh, that has ran Bengals all season. Bengals was the most popular playbook really the last two years, and Vos pretty much ran that all year. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. A lot to discuss, a lot to talk about, a lot to uh, look at. So, right off the bat, uh, I want to just kind of pinpoint a couple of things that are going to be important for the matchup. So, Vos is going to base out of a default aligned dollar spinner look. So, these safeties here, they are going to be lower in the box because he is in a cover zero blitz. So if they were like standard depth, like if this was baseline press dollar, these safeties would probably be back in this area back in here. The other thing that's important to uh, talk about right off the bat is this alignment right here. So Vos is going to play with his match coverage on. What that is going to do is it's going to allow him to put this guy in a third, but this third will press really good on the solo receiver. And it also has to do with the alignment of this corner. As you see, most dollar defenses, this corner would be out here or he will be back here for Dez. In Vose's defense, he's actually going to be pressed up. So kind of a more aggressive defense, more aggressive, at least pre-snap look. And really, Spinner has been the best bunch defense for a really long time because it does a really nice job of aligning. You can get real nice press animations on three of the receivers and then you can kind of basically key in on the tight end and running back with your user notice that des audibles instantly from bunch over to bunch halfback strong the main purpose of this obviously there's good plays from bunch halfback strong of course but it allows or it, it limits the backing up ability of vos on the slot corner the main blitz that vos is going to be running is going to be spinner which is typically going to be this right here Sometimes sending four, sometimes sending five. This should be Vose's user the majority of the game. And then what we'll probably see, he likes to do this coverage, which is like a rollover third type of technique. Maybe this guy dropping into the flat. Maybe this guy dropping into the vertical hook. But generally, the base shell is going to look something like this, rolling over the bunch side. Okay? With that, let's go ahead and get into the, get into the film. So off rip, we get Durham. Now, the reason why... He's calling this Durham play. It's a really good play no matter where you're at. 
but we have an initial flat read here to the wheel. We're then going to kind of peak probably this running back and then maybe take a look over in these pockets of the defense. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And if he is truly running this rollover third, then I would bet you that Dez is thinking I can hit this post over in that area, which is going to force him to kind of get out of the main defense that he wants to play. So a lot of chess happens on the first play of the game. And here we see, okay, this is rollover, but it's a different type of rollover. In this rollover, you're going to get a rollover third here, rollover third here, and then this guy's going to be rolling over to the solo side, and we're going to have a cloud, a vert hook, and then it looks like this guy's manned up on the tight end. We get a send three or send four, sorry. And so great read by Dez, really the first read that he's going to look at. He's looking right here. This is wide open. And so he's just going to take what the defense gives him. It's really important in these high-level games, call good plays, make good reads. You're going to see that in the majority of the tournament games, it really comes down to a, a mistake, like a bad read. Okay, real quick, I did want to say this. So this is the main audible that is going to be difficult for Vos to deal with. He's in default alignment, and he's in spinner. So this audible right here to trips, what Vos does to counter this is kind of interesting. So what this would do if you were to truly stay in default, both uh, one of these guys would go over here, and then what would happen is you would have basically two on two with that backside tight end, which is, is not great, especially if you're wanting to blitz that slot. So what Vose is going to do is he instantly base aligns his coverage. See there, he instantly base aligns, but look, see how it's moving players all over the place? That's the audible. Um, this, If you're going to run spinner, you have to be prepared for this. So from a base alignment perspective, it's not terrible because you do get the safety kind of topping the middle trips receiver, which is one of the best, I think, things you can do to stop that. But just understand, like, this is, a, this is another big part of the chess match that you're going to be seeing is when he audibles to trips, how does Vos handle that? Vos base aligns so that he can keep three over two on the right. And then he can keep three on three with really the linebacker. So four over three on the left. So he has a numbers advantage by base aligning his coverage. Okay. So Vo or um, Dez is going to go to this setup right here. Really nice play. I talked about it before. Uh, I would rather see this guy on the post and this guy on a drag. I think it's a better route combo, but you know, obviously Dez is in the tournament for a reason. So, this C route, what this is going to do and what this is designed to do is if this defender is in an outside third, let's say that we get a coverage like this, for example, which is probably what Dez is expecting, and we get this flat, this is really good for taking advantage of that because this will clear out the third, and then you've got that C route to be able to throw over there. So let's see kind of what the coverage is and kind of talk through uh, kind of the main way that Vose is appearing to handle this. So you see we get a back off. Oh, one other thing I did want to mention is Vose has his match, his zone coverage match on. So it, it does change a little bit about what are the options he has to defend. So anyways, here right off rip, it looks like we get, I'm not even quite sure, what that? It looks like he rolled over to the trip side. So it's actually like the couple things that Dez wanted to do. It looks like Vose kind of, kind of was ready for both of those things. He ends up rolling over the trip side, and and now you're going to see kind of this real chess match is going to be which side is Vose rolling over defensively, and how can Dez take advantage of that? Here it goes to this. He's got the tight end up the seam. He's got the corner route. Really nice read there over the top. Vose will um, situationally just play basic press man as well. So, and, and again, this is just so he can be a little bit more aggressive. Again, you see the audible to, to trips this time bunch, but he's going to baseline. He's going to treat bunch tight end just like trips tight end. Underrated route combo here, and I've talked about this in my bunch tight end ebook. If you guys don't have my ebooks, they're in the Patreon. I love this. So we get a block at the tight end. This is one of my favorite combos. You have a little Texas route to the back, and then you have your double corner just from a bunch tight end alignment, which I think is actually really good. Anyways, you see here, you get Vos rolling over here to the right side. The cool part about this double corner is this corner will get over a press cloud, whereas the one from Bunch Strong will not. So they're just different types of corner routes that you would want to use in different situations. Right there, I think he did end up getting screamed at. And so this is another big principle that I want to drive home as we're watching this film. Blitzing is the centerpiece of defense. Blitzing is the most important element of defense because 
it it can make the offense uncomfortable when you send pressure you 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 don't have to have you you almost never will have like perfect coverage very rarely will you be able to cover every single thing especially if they're calling good plays they're mixing it up all that stuff but with blitzing you can kind of pick your spot and it, it can make a big big difference for you so anyways here i think we get some kind of pause but let's get back into the game but 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 understand like blitzing is so so important you have to have a defense that can send heat you got to be able to do that okay uh, because you have to force them to have to adjust to you, which is very, you know, like it's like the only thing to me, the only thing defense really has is its ability to blitz is really the most important thing. And then also to be able to make everything look the same and change the looks post snap. Those are the big, big important principles of defense. Here we get a little vert hook. This is kind of interesting. This vert hook basically matches late, but I think essentially we're going to, what we're getting in here is I think actually we're getting this look. Let me see if I can show this. We get a cloud here. We're going to get this guy on a third, this guy in a middle third maybe, and this guy in a man up. We could also be getting cross manning as well, but this is interesting. So this is a vert hook. This vert hook will normally match this receiver, but he's going to do it late. And it, this, because this guy is flowing way outside, he's trying to get out in here. It leaves this massive void in this pocket. And so Dez does a really good job of once this guy kind of passes that vert hook, the vert hook does match him, but he matches him really late in the play. And so you can kind of throw this in behind it. Really nice read there from Dez. Now, this is where most comp Madden games are won and lost. Truly, it is the red zone. Uh, I think the red zone is in this year's game by far the hardest place to score. And so he goes to wide zone. When Vos doesn't know what to do, he basically just base aligns. So essentially, it seems to me like he wants to be on default when he's playing any kind of bunch set. And if he's not playing bunch, he's going to base align it. Now, he is here. Uh, he does come out and dime normal. That appears to be his red zone defense. And we get these deep curl flats. These like 30-yard curl flats in the red zone, really popular to try to take away the corners. The beauty of the curl flats is they don't get sucked in as bad in the red zone specifically. So putting your curl flats at about 20 and then leaving your flats on default allows you to take these safeties, put them in curl flats, and they will take away these outside corners. Here, Des comes out in five wide, audible's down. It's a lot of Mickey Mouse stuff, just trying to kind of like get a matchup. This this might be, this is a single back bunch. Uh, oh my gosh, that was, mm. okay, there you go. Fourth and goal. Let's see what he does here. But pretty much this tournament was primarily won and lost in the red zone. And it's because it's really hard to score in the red zone. You know, your defensive strategy, and this has been true in Madden for a really long time, if you can hold your opponent to threes, that is so, so, so important. Because if you're getting sevens and they're getting threes, right, mathematically you're going to win that game every single time. So if, you know, holding, holding your opponent to three is almost like getting a stop, especially in this year's game. So... We'll uh, run, and we get a stop. Vose gets a stop, and here we go. So so uh, Vose gets a complete stop on his first drive. He's got to get out of the end zone here. But uh, let's see what happens. So we're going to get our audible set up. He's got the ball on the two-yard line. Dez is going to come out in dollar. Now, uh, Dez's defense actually ran a different defense here. So this is kind of interesting to me. So situationally here, ball is on the two-yard line, and it's a minute and 40 in the first, okay? Vos just gets a big stop. Dez really does not run this in particular defense a lot. The main defense you're going to see Dez do is really the double safety walk down defense where these guys are going to come down into the box, and then you can blitz a plethora of people. But in this situation, it appears to me that Dez wants to send a significant amount of pressure to try to be very aggressive because of where the ball is at. So he's going to actually go into more of a standard dollar. He backs off both of these outside cloud flats, potentially to maybe put them in hard flats and maybe run like traditional DB fire. Maybe he's running the free safety. I'm not 100% sure, but it just it surprises me that he comes out in this because this is not normally his main defense. And uh, let's see here. So he, yeah, so he ends up going to kind of a, a free safety blitz. He doesn't back this slot corner up, which is kind of interesting to me. He also hard flats. He shades down this hook curl, and then basically it's a cover three. It's kind of a standard way to run this free safety zone blitz defense. And, and he lurks him right off the rip. <laughs> and he's able to get the lurk right off rip here. 
I think that's just a bad read from Bose. And that's what I was talking about, guys. Like, that's a terrible read because the tight end's standing wide open. But, I mean, obviously I say that, you know, watching the game. Obviously he's playing the game, you pressure the game, playing a really good player who has a good user, who has good defense. All those things are factors. And so I just say all that to say I find even at the top of the level, and, and if I watch my games back, if I watch, if I watch film, right, if I really lock in on some film, what you'll find is people make a lot more mistakes than you realize when you watch the game. Like Mr. Reed right there, right? He is able to hit this, able to get out of there, and good play. Now, I did want to go over this because we haven't talked about this play yet on the channel. So um, this is tight slots, and this is going to be the play mesh spot. So what he's going to do is he's going to play games with this motion out. This is what Vose is going to do when you're running tight, tight slots. Understand this is more of what Dez's main defense is, as you see these guys come into the box. And Dez, interestingly enough, is going to be running a lot of spinner, specifically against compression sets. The reason we know it's spinner is because of this blitz angle right here. It's kind of stunting inside. And then what you're going to see him do is he is going to adjust uh, uh, adjust a lot out of spinner. Now, the route combination that Vos goes to here is really a cover three beater, but it's basically this guy on this uh, post. This guy could be oftentimes maybe on a flat. There's a lot of different things you could do with this receiver, but you have a little slant here. You might have a streak here. You might have a flat. You might block the tight end, right? There's a lot of variation, but the main thing that we're trying to do is we're going to use this post, which is a very similar post to the post Y trail. And then we're not going to have these two receivers. They're not going to run vertical. They're going to stay underneath. And so if it's cover zero, like it is right here, or let's say this guy was in an outside third, that outside third typically is not going to get enough depth to cover that post in this year's game. Um, it's not true every year, but in this year's game, that's what it is. So you see right here, we get a flat. Let's see if we can look at this a little more. We get a flat here. We get a streak, and then we get the post, and then we have this as basically our check down. So if the user bails here, we're going to throw this, right? But in this case, it appears to me that Dez is just a step behind, and this is crazy. I mean, the ability to make this read while you're getting screamed at, I mean, as you see how close this could be to a, an interception, a D-line pick, a sack, but instead, it's a touchdown. Nice play by Vos. So now, you know, kind of a lot of a lot of things have happened here in the first, you know, four minutes of the game. You know, we've kind of seen like kind of the main defensive strategies from both sides. They've both kind of hit in some big plays. And now this is where, you know, kind of both players will probably start to kind of settle in and start to make adjustments off of what we've been seeing. So here we see a little cover three beater looking to maybe hit this this uh, triangle receiver. Nice, nice read. Nice user, too, by Vos. Just kind of a good play by both parties. And, uh, you know, kind of offense wins that wins that rep. So here, this is an interesting route combo to go to short side. He's going to go to this tight end corner. I don't know. Is this – who's on offense? Oh, Dez is on offense. Okay. It's like, who's on offense there? Yeah, he goes to that short side. This is a, this is a combo Dez runs a lot. Um, this is like a basically a right side float out of bunch. Not 100% sure why we're running that uh, specific combo. I mean, I guess it has to do with, you know, we're anticipating him adjusting over here, and we're going to come over here. Again, he keeps running this tight. Oh, my gosh. That guy lurked. Look at this. Look at that lurk. Wow. It's a great lurk. Dez threw a couple of those this tournament. I feel like Dez offensively is... Like, he's, he's not the best. Like, I wouldn't say he's terrible, but I wouldn't say he's, like, the top, top tier in terms of comp offensive players. I would say the thing that makes Dez really good is I think his defense is pretty decent. I really do. I think his ability to just change the looks post-snap. He changes the looks a lot. He mixes up his defensive coverages a lot. Um, so, all right. So, Vo's up seven now. And I think... Yeah, Dez got the ball first. So, Vos gets the ball at half. So, this is a kind of a must-score drive here. And, I mean, that's bagged. This is why this defense is so good. So, you see here, we get the pressure. This is a send five. The spinner blitz, to me, is the best. I think it's really good. This right here is great defense. Like, oh, my gosh, this is such good defense. It's really simple defense, but it's perfect defense for Durham. 
We get this cloud flat here. So you can throw this, but it's probably going to get KO'd, especially in this year's game. Like, this guy's kind of drifting here. Like, there will be separation, but it's not enough to really warrant throwing this route. This is just absolutely bagged because of that match third that I was telling you about. We get this guy rolling into the middle. This guy's going to roll over top, so he's going to take that away late. So then all Dez really has to do is basically take the tight end and then kind of peel back to the post. And I mean, this is just, and the pressure's so good because you're sending five out. Well, when you send five out, you're going to get screamed at. And especially if you're sending pressure. So just a great defense, just a just really good defense by Vos right there. I felt like that was really, shows the power of these safety thirds. Now here, Vos changes the look and he flips the rollover, which is important. Uh, and, and we get an absolute dart from Vo or from Dez. That was a crazy beam. And I'm not even sure why. Let's look at this a little closer. I don't know what, what is he doing on that right side? Is that a quarter? That might be a quarter there. Yeah. Tight end just cooks the man coverage basically is what happened right there. And then um, a good free form from Dez. Able to get out. I mean, for as good of defense as Vos played the play previously, I feel like that that play was not his best. Uh, not his best coverage for that situation. Okay, so this is what Dez wants to do. He wants to be in this right here. This is the main defense he wants to be in. It was actually, he. I don't know why he put a quarter there. So he's going to call this, and then he's going to audible down into DB fire two a lot. So he's going to basically have cover two. Um, this spinner, man ups. Yeah, it's decent. There's a lot open. There's a lot open. Let's see here. Tight slots. Let's see what his coverage is for tight. Scissors here to the left. Users the corner. So a lot of what defense is in Madden that's important to kind of touch on here as we're seeing this play out is understanding, you know, what the formation of strengths are, what the leverage is, what you can take away, what you really need to use her. So you see that Dez is doing a lot with his user. And it, depending on the formation, depending on the play, depending on the adjustments, he's running all over the place. He's sometimes in the middle field. He's sometimes with a flat. He's sometimes taking the corners, right? He's he's all over the place. So that's an important piece of defense as well. And, and you know, I think it's at, just as important as your – as your blitzes are, you know, very close secondary importance is just being good with your user, like being able to understand like what your job actually is, right? And then being able to take away the big things with your user. Maybe, you know, maybe your coverage just means that you need to take the corner route to the short side. Maybe your coverage means you need to take the running back underneath route, right? Just understanding like what your job is, is so important here. How did Des get the ball back? Oh, yeah, that was Vos. Okay. So now we're back in the spinner. This is a five wide bomb. It's a really good play. Come back. I got to share that route combo on the channel. It's a really good route combo. And it's out of Jet's playbook, and I really never run it. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Get out of that. Back to this. All right. All right. So, second quarter. About two minutes left in the second quarter. And this is where, you know, clock management becomes very important. You're seeing Vos really put – and really when he runs press, man, it doesn't look terrible. When he, when he really – you know, he kind of mans up sometimes. And he just bags and, man, it's interesting. There's no KOs, nothing. Here we go. There's the audible trips. There's the baseline. Now we're going to play this little game here on the left. He's going to back this guy up. I don't know what he puts this guy in. I want to, Is this a backed off third? No, backed off cloud. We've got to roll. Okay. Two minutes. About to the two-minute warning. Dez's goal here is basically to try to go into half. He wants to be the last person to score here. So that's, that's the basic thought process for Dez. He's just trying to make sure that he takes the clock. And the... The other kind of important element, of course, is that we're on a fourth down. We need to get a conversion. You can learn a lot when watch fourth down about what people like. What are their, like, what is their money plays? What are they going to call on third and fourth down? So, like, here, if you take a look at this, we got spinner, and we get some really aggressive, I mean, I don't know what. I mean, Vos might have been trying to give up a touchdown on purpose, but it's almost like we got, like, a, yeah, I just don't know what the, yeah, squares wide open for a touchdown. I don't know. 
But again, the progression dictated he's going to look to that wheel route first. So, yeah, I kind of understand that as well. So we get trips with the baseline. This guy, I kind of like that position of that player there. I might be in spinner, boys. The way, the way Vos runs spinner, Vos's defense is really good. I feel like it's really good. Um, let's see here. There's that third here. He's got that. He's going to throw that. And, okay. Now, Vos, interestingly enough here, there's probably a reason why Vos stayed underneath on that. It, you know, without overthinking it too much, I do think that Vos isn't terribly mad that he gets the ball back because he now has the ability to go down and score before half and get a three-point advantage going into halftime. So, it's not terrible for Vos that Dez scored there, honestly. It's actually probably good for him. So here we get a little bit more slant pose. Kind of going back to that combo that he threw the touchdown on. Again, look at this. And I think what we're seeing from Dez is a lot of spinner. I started to notice that in this tournament. I think up until this tournament specifically, I don't know if watching Des play before this weekend, I feel like the majority of the things he was doing was really out of DB fire too. But I actually think he ran a lot of spinner in this tournament. I'm not really sure exactly why either. Um, I think it's because when you adjust out of spinner, you don't get as much of a tell as when you adjust out of DB fire, specifically when you are playing a compression set, when they go, when they go to trips and stuff, I don't feel like, I feel like spinner has way more tells than, but you have to basically instantly audible to spinner before they audible to trips. That would be the, the trick. So the fact that, like, if you're playing a random and head-to-head, -head, I think you'll find that if they're coming out in, like, random formations, you'll find less tells in DB Fire that you would in spinner. But when you're playing these guys that come out in the same formation every play, spinner actually is probably better because it has less tells than DB Fire. Because if Dez was to pinch his D-line, they wouldn't move. Uh, the slot corners wouldn't move. If he was to do that in dollar, they wouldn't move. So, little fun facts there. Bose is able to get down here. He's not going to get, probably not going to get seven here. It's kind of the biggest, I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised. I mean, Dez doesn't run great defense, though, I will say. I don't know why he called that. All right, so that's going to be it for the first half, pretty much. Dez is going to get one play. And I think Vos gets the ball. Does he? Yeah. So Vos gets the ball. So so that three has really been official to him because now he can go up by a touchdown and uh, be in a pretty good pretty good position to be in control of the game. So kind of a juggernaut of a first half. A lot happening. And Des and good pressure. Let's see here. So again, just I mean, this is interesting to me. The fact that these guys come down and then. He just does a lot with the coverages, a lot of roll coverage. What it really does, what I found with him and just watching him play, Dez specifically, the windows to throw against Dez compared to a lot of people, I feel like Dez took away a lot of throwing lanes with this with this safety walk down defense. So that was that was kind of one of my big like takeaways from the the now here you're going to get a Mabel probably. These guys are backed off, so he can Mabel. He's not going to. Understand that one of the things you have to realize when you're watching these players play, you kind of have to come to the table with the reality that it's very likely that Dez and Vos, from a knowledge perspective, are very similar. Like Vos knows that if he's backing off these outside corners, he's probably going to Mabel. So then Dez kind of counters that by backing off the corners and then not Mabeling. And then here you get more of a Mabel. So it's, you give the same look, so it gives you the same options, but you do different things. And that is really what makes, you know, I think what makes a good defensive player, the ability to keep the same look, but to do a lot of different things, to to create leverage different ways. And that's why Dollar and 6-1 to me are the best defenses, because not only do they have the best blitzes, but they also have uh, the best ability to kind of do some different things with your coverage on the back end of the cover on the back end of the defense. I feel like Bo's missed a touchdown there. The corner route was probably open early. That's the thing about these flats. A lot of people like to use these flats in the red zone. I think f like cloud flats in the red zone to me are the easiest. To I want you to run cloud flats. Purples to me are harder to manipulate when you get down here in the uh, inside the ten yard line. Single back bunch. This is power O probably. 
Let's get a little motion out. Try to get a lead blocker. Get a delay a game. That's not good. And Bose got the running back. Another really underrated thing for him getting the three is if he does get stalled here in the red zone, he's able to still go up by one possession, which is really important in terms of just the ability to stay kind of ahead of the game or in control of the game as we get into kind of more of the, the fourth quarter later in the game. This motion out running back here. A lot of times I would actually like to see a curl route, but he's going to throw an out route here. Tight end, force feed it. Kind of had it. Just didn't come down with the ball. Trying to click on and basically do That's like a Madden 22 concept where you can cut that wheel route off in the red zone and aggressive catch it. So Bose kind of needs a stop here. The flat here. This is one of Dez's favorite plays. Deep corner. You just quick throw the flat out of it. And Dez does a lot of stuff like that where like he'll audible just really for one route or one little thing. Let's see here. They're rolling over to the trip side, basically. So what Vos does a lot seems to me to be when he plays trips tight end, he's going to roll over to that trip side most of the time. Here we're going to get that C route to try to get that jam. That's another thing that I like about Vos's defense. He gets, because he's on default alignment, because his match coverage is on, he gets a lot more reroutes and presses, and it delays the routes. And then what that allows is for your time. It throws off the timing of the offense really well. So here, going to this little cover three bomb. Bo's just going to take it. Come back down. Good. And like I said, Dez just, I mean, he's going to audible almost every play. He's gonna, and if he doesn't audible, he's probably going to flip it. A little RPO. What's interesting is these guys, um, I don't know. It's just interesting, like, when they call the RPO, why they call the RPO. It's typically just to kind of mix it in, just to kind of throw something at you, make you respect it. A little slant post combo. This is an old combo. A little juke. And you're seeing Dez just give Vos the tour. I mean, he's just, you know, he's audible in every play. We're going now to this drive corner. Every time he's coming to this formation, he's called that play. Let's see what he does here. No, he's going to go to the double corner out of this. This is an underrated combo. He actually has it. I think you could freeform that down that way. That's an underrated combo out of that bunch open. I got to mix that formation in a little bit more. There's the cloud. There's this route. No. Scramble out of there. Good. And now we're going to get a red zone situation. So when we get in the red zone, it appears like Vose is pretty much standard going to be in dime. Oh, nice read. Wow. It's a tight window. Dez is like a high ball king. I mean, he just, boom, that's a high throw. It should be a high throw, isn't it? I can't see underneath there. I would assume that'd be a high point. All right, so there you go. So Boog, or uh, uh, Vose has got to go get seven here. So now he's, you know, this is kind of a make or break drive. Kind of needs seven uh, if you're Vos. Just situationally, because if you don't get seven, I don't know. I mean, you could you could kick three, but you really pretty. I mean, you really need seven. So here's a wide side. It's kind of an interesting combo there. Post wheel drag, okay. A little post wheel drag with the flat, the uh, flat in the corner of the tight end. Throw that in that pocket right there to the right. And you're seeing now you're gonna see Des start caging. I mean, once he starts, when he starts going to this stuff, this stuff is to to me his best coverage is like right here. Let's see if he does it again. Let's see. Roll over. Nice. That should have been a pick. That was really good defense. Yeah, so we're getting – you see him starting to – this is like, to me, this is like now we're playing defense. Now, to me, I think – I find it interesting to me that Dez goes to this almost every – in every big down, every big third down, every big fourth down, this is where he's going to go. He goes to this cover three defense out of um, out of big nickel over G – and I don't know how often it actually works for him. But, like, that's, like, his thing. Like, when, he, when you get in that situation, he's going to put his flats on 20. I think that's just his bend but don't break defense, try to get you on a fourth down type of stuff. Here he's going to stay in it. So, real quick, let me just explain. So, with Big Nick Clover G, you can back these guys off. These are guys that are going to be in 20-yard clouds. 
and then we're going to third typically these guys and then this guy is going to you know it's basically going to create almost like a diamond coverage normally he's going to user the d end in this case he's not but the thing about big nickel g there's really not a great pressure threat from it this year there's a couple decent blitzes but he's not even i mean he's not even giving that as a look so it's just kind of interesting to me that he goes to that all, all almost every big down he goes to that Oh my gosh! That's see see that see how tight these windows are. Like that's the thing. Like you've got to be perfect free form to hit this. I mean, it's these are really, really really tight windows for Vos, and he's able to, to able to hit it. But I mean, they're not. I wouldn't say. I mean, it's open, but it's like it's like not like a clean read, you know. And that's that's what's interesting to me. And it's really a, a you know kind of a variation of DB Fire Two are really the best coverages that I've seen from Dez in this game when he tries to play man I don't feel like it's that good but when he gets into this and again and again he is playing tight slots tight slots are really good against man coverage so third and three and really I mean this is just you know Dez is just going to try to hold the door as best he can Vos would like to take the clock but it's almost impossible to take all this clock here and we get the shaded down yellows this is a really good adjustment so third and three this is a really good like situational defense let's say you're in third and three fourth and one he's going to send the a gap okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to hard flat here and then these are hook curls now these hook curls are shaded underneath and then typically these guys are in thirds so they're going to make it hard to throw the corner out it's like especially if the pressure comes in so your job becomes basically this little box right in here is really where you're picking uh putting putting your energy into covering it's a really good, like, short yardage defense. A lot of people like it this year. You see he's able to take that post. Now we're in fourth and three. He might go back to the exact same coverage, uh, just maybe out of a different formation, right? You can call it the same basic coverage out of different formations. But here it does appear like he's going to go to the 20 and five out of 6-1. So let's see what he does. There's got to be two hook curls. There's got to be two hook curls in these situations. Fourth and three. No, he does not, and he still gets the stop. So he sends it. He sent the pressure. Oh, okay, so what we did was we – okay, not bad, not bad. So essentially we – these are hard flats. Basically, they're protect sticks, flats, and he's going to send everybody here, okay? Now, what these two safeties do are really important. This one is going to be manned up here, and then this one is a hook curl. So what is his user responsible for? Really over here is the main responsibility. What's open? The corner to the left. But what we're banking on is that we're sending everybody. And this is basically the play of the game. Gets a sack, and that's going to be pretty much, I mean, if he gets a first down, that's going to be GG's. And it's crazy how fast that game flipped because Vose was really, I mean, first half, I felt like Vose was really in a good spot. I think he had two picks. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's right there, toe to toe with Des, though for sure. Now we're going to spinner and we're leaving man line on. I'm not sure why we're doing that. Maybe because he's going to try to blitz a lot of people. Maybe to try to help for the RPO. To me, this is not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then we get out of there with this bubble screen. Des was Des was really good with the bubble screen. If there's one thing I took away from Des, I take away a lot from Des. I feel like Des played really good mad in this tournament. The power alert, alert bubble out of Jets. You need to play. You throw that. It's tough to guard. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn more, join the Patreon. Links in the description. Hope you enjoyed these film rooms. I love doing these. I feel like it helps me get better. Hopefully it helps you get better as well. Like I said, all the ebooks are on the Patreon. Links in the description down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.